So many of you guys have been asking me to make more specific and intermediate type tutorials for GameMaker Studio 2. So in this video I'm going to show you how to make a targeting and attacking system for an RPG like game. Think kind of like a MMORPG where you right click on an enemy and you auto attack. So that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. I already got a little bit done, you know, basic movement system because this tutorial is not about moving. But uh, yeah, just pretty basic. So again, in this video I'm going to show you how to walk over to this bad guy here right click him, create a little maybe red box around him so you know who you're targeting and then when you're close enough you will automatically begin to do damage to the enemy so let's go ahead and uh, get started so we're gonna close this now again the only thing I have going is two sprites sprite player and sprite enemy and both of them are middle center that's very important um, they are 64 by 64 sprites and yours can be any size but you're just gonna have to tweak a few things so just keep that in mind uh, and then we have both of our objects now an object player we just have player speed and then in the step event here uh, let me go back to a single uh, in the step event <clears throat> we just have a little basic movement thing so nothing too fancy so let's go ahead and start by adding some hit points to our object enemy. So we'll create a create event and we'll say hit points equals, uh, actually rather, we'll say max hit points equals 100 and then we'll say hit points equals max hit points. That just makes it easier. So we can just change this variable around if we wanna give our enemy more or less hit points and that way we don't have to change two variables here. Uh, then we'll draw that variable above our object enemy just so we know uh, how many hit points we he has when we're doing damage to him so we'll say first draw self which that'll just draw out whatever the sprite index is and then we'll say draw uh, set color red and then of course you can add a font if you want we're not going to do that draw text um, x y minus I don't know probably about a hundred <laughs> Uh, it doesn't really matter. And then we'll say string uh, hit points. Yep. And then we'll say plus. And then in quotations, put a little slash here with some spaces. And then we'll say string max hit points. Now, if this works properly, it should just kind of draw out how many hit points we have. And then next to that, it should say what the max hit point is for the enemy, and there it is. Okay, so when we do damage to him, it, it'll kind of take away from that number on the left. And let's just move it over a little bit. 35, maybe. I'm, I'm just kind of like throwing numbers out, but just to make it look a little bit better. Okay, so our object enemy does have hit points now. Uh, so we also want to say this in the step event, just to get this out of the way. If hit points is um, less than or equal to zero, then we want to destroy this instance. Okay, so now he will disappear once we kill the guy. Now we want to go over to our object player, and there's a few things we want to add in here. We want to say target equals no one, and then we want to say damage equals, oh, uh, let's do about, uh, I don't know, 20 damage per hit. So there we go. Then we want to say in our object enemy, we want to add an event and say uh, mouse. By the way, this is a prompt to in tutorial. So um, if I make a few mistakes, please just bear with me. So in our object enemy, we want to say mouse global, uh, global right released. Actually, no, not global, I'm sorry. Change event, mouse, if right released. So if we press the right mouse button on our object enemy, we wanna say object player dot target equals uh, ID. Okay, so basically we have our variable called target and when we right click on our object enemy it's going to set that variable in the player of target to the instance ID of our object enemy so we can play around with that so then we're gonna put a few more things here under damage we're gonna say can attack equals true and then we're gonna say attack speed equals 
Uh, how about how about thirty? Okay, so this is how fast we're going to attack the the enemy. This is just uh, can attack. Of course, we'll go ahead and add an alarm to this alarm zero, and we'll say can attack equals true. Now all this will come together in a minute. So have your alarm zero uh, attack equals true. Okay, so this will be how fast you attack the enemy. This will be kind of like so we don't spam an attack, and this will be how much damage that we're actually going to do to our object uh, enemy. So now in the step event. After our movement, we're going to say if target does not equal no one, and then go ahead and put in your brackets, and then we're going to say if target or if instance exists target. So this is important because after you kill the target, it's not going to exist anymore, and then uh, and then if you still have a target, you're going to get an error message. So if the instance exists, so then we're going to say if can attack equals true. Now we're actually going to do the attack. So if can attack equals true, uh, then can attack equals false. So we're going to set that to false first of all, and then we're going to say uh, target dot damage or, or hit points minus equals i random range damage minus five, and then damage plus five. So this is cool because that way we don't just automatically do whatever we put in that damage variable, which we set to 20. It's going to do now anywhere from 15 all the way up to 25. It's going to do a random number in between those, uh, those two numbers, basically. So you can do that or not do that. I like doing that just to add a little bit of randomness. Of course, you can set this 5 to a variable so it can be easily changed and manipulated. And you can set these to whatever whatever you want. So uh, I just like to do that. Okay, so now we went ahead and damaged the the uh, target, and then we're going to say um, alarm zero equals attack speed. Alrighty. So of course, alarm zero sets our can attack to true, and then once it's true again, we can keep doing uh, we can keep doing damage. So all right. I think that should be about it. So let's go ahead and run the game and see what happens. <laughs> okay, so when we go over to him and we right click him, okay, he's gonna begin to do damage to him and he should kill him. Yep, there he goes. So there's a few things that we wanna do though, still, <clears throat> because uh, when we run the game, I can attack him from here, so if I right click, he's going to begin to do damage to him. So we want to make sure that we are within range before we actually kill the guy. So let's go ahead and um, put this in. Let's create another variable called attack range, and we're going to set this to about, I don't know, 100. We'll, we'll tweak that and play around with it. But uh, okay, so after if instance exists, we're going to say... Um, if distance to object target um, yeah is less than or equal to attack range then we're gonna run all of this code so go ahead and put all this in the brackets here go ahead and push that over okay so now let's run the code now it should be yeah so it's not gonna work so I right clicked him, but he's not gonna do any damage until I get close to him. And now of course, you know, when I'm within range, which is 100, uh, which we can tighten that up a little bit. We can probably set it to half of that. Okay, so now the attack range is 50. So now when we get close, oh, I gotta right click him. Okay, so I right clicked him. Now when we get close, uh, yeah, he's gonna begin to do damage to the enemy and he'll begin to kill him. Bam! All right, so we're coming along pretty good. Now there's one other thing I'd like to add, and that's a target box. So let's go ahead and create another sprite, and we'll just name this sprite under slash target box. And uh, we have it set to 6464. Let's go to image, resize all frames. We want to set this to a little bit bigger than whatever our um, our enemies are so 64 maybe 68 will work 
it should work. Okay, so this is 68 by 68 now. Uh, let's see, I haven't done this in Game Maker Studio 2 yet, so let's pull out our rectangle tool. Let's see if we can draw a box here. No, I don't want a box like that. I don't want it to be filled. Ah, uh, crap. I don't know how to do this. Okay, that's fine. Let's just do it this way. Let's just draw a line. We're, we're basically just going to uh, draw a square here. So sorry, I don't, I don't know how to do that in Game Maker Studio 2 yet. But uh, it's not a big deal. So now we just have a, a, uh, a box. And we're just going to put the enemy in this box whenever he's targeted. So let's close this. Let's center it. Middle center. And now let's open up our object enemy. And let's go to our draw event. And we're going to say um, if object player, well, yeah, object player dot target equals ID, then draw sprite, um, sprite under slash target box minus one, x, y. Now that should draw a target box around the enemy whenever he is targeted. And it does. So, what that means is now we can add multiple enemies, and we can target them one at a time. So, let's kill the first one. Pretty cool. Let's kill the second one. Yeah, so it works now, and uh, that's, that's about it. Uh, I don't really know what else to add to this tutorial. I think that this pretty much sums it up. This is how you make a target hitbox. I don't know what you call it exactly. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I hope this video helped you guys. I hope you like it. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and uh, leave that in this video. Don't forget to tickle that like button, and we will see you next video.